We are praying in the normal way. We are praying, you know, in the in the outside. That's the normal way to pray because we are praying with our languages. But when we have the Holy Spirit and we are praying in tongues, when the Holy Spirit fills us and the, the evidence of the Holy Spirit in us, the praying in tongues, is praying an elevated prayer in another dimension. It's called praying in the Spirit. It's no longer praying at the same praying level when things are happening in the natural. It's praying in the Spirit when things are controlled by the Spirit. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. Jesus in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Can somebody quickly just read it one eight? What does it say? If you are first to get there without the microphone, you can just shout. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come. But you shall receive what? Power. power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Now when we go to Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit came upon them, what was the evidence of this power that they received? Hello, church. They begin to speak in tongues. Meaning the dimension of their operation had shifted or changed. I don't hear what I'm saying. Hallelujah. But the one praying in the spirit is very important. When you pray in the spirit, when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, it changes everything. Your life does not remain the same. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's quickly open 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I'm about to finish. Chapter 14. First Corinthians chapter 14. Can you read verse 4? I want you to get this. Get and understand what I'm teaching today. It's very important. Yes. Verse 4. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. He that speaks in tongues, they edify. What is to edify? To bear the horn. What is to edify? To supplement. What is to edify? He that speaks in tongues edifies himself. It means there is an increase that is happening to you right there. Are you hearing? Are you getting this? But I want praying tongues is important. It doesn't matter what the devil says. Praying tongues is important. When you pray in tongues, you are maturing in the spirit. Hallelujah. You know, I remember one time, I think I've shared this testimony. I spent the whole day when I was in high school in this prefect's room. I was praying in the spirit. And then I met a lady with a neck problem. And she was crying. And I had never prayed for anybody with that type of problem to heal. But because I spent hours edifying myself, the moment I saw her, it's like my faith was changed up. Somebody read 220 quickly. Uh, I'm sure some, some know it by head. Yes, please. But you, beloved, uh -huh. building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. You, beloved, build up yourselves. So when we are praying in the Spirit, praying by the Holy Ghost, we are building up ourselves. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, tell me about you are building up yourself. Building up myself. You are building up yourself. You are building up yourself. It means you are getting to another dimension. Hallelujah. It means it's no longer the same. If you are building up, if it was on two layers today, if I am going upwards, it means by tomorrow I might be at eight layers. Hallelujah. And if I keep on doing it, the next day I might be at ten layers. The next day I might be at twelve layers, twenty layers, fifty layers, hundred layers. I keep on going up and there is nothing that stops me. Says he that prays in an unknown tongue, he that prays in the Holy Spirit, he that prays by the Spirit of God, they begin to build themselves up. Most of the times when you are feeling down and out, you don't need anybody to comfort you. You have the help of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You just have to tune in the frequency, begin to pray in tongues, and you start to see that you are rising. Hallelujah. You start to see that you become strengthened. Amen. That you become courageous. Amen. 
It says you build yourself up in your most holy faith. When you read the Amplified, it says something so wonderful. It says you rise up like an edifice. Hallelujah. Uh, the people who do construction here, you know what an edifice is. You might, you might even translate or interpret that way for us. It's a tall structure that imposes. If here, let's say in town, we have a 40, a 40 story building, it's an edifice. Why? Because it will be the tallest building. It's imposing itself. If you go high up in the sky, you will see it. Why? Because it's an edifice. It imposes. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, you have influence to impose yourself over certain things. Hallelujah. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, you have influence to impose decisions to favor you. Why? Because you are praying with the help of the Holy Spirit. He says you are praying with groanings. Words cannot express. I know somebody's hearing what I'm saying. Amen. That is the importance of praying in the Holy Ghost. It means as a believer, that is the one thing that should be ringing in your mind. I've got to be in line with the Holy Spirit. I've got to be growing in the Holy Ghost. You know, there are some churches where the power of God doesn't move. And you want to know why it doesn't move. Jesus said to the disciples, wait until you have received what? The Holy Spirit. When you have received Him, you shall be enjoyed with power. And when they received Him, they began to pray in other tongues. After they began to pray in other tongues, miracles started to happen. Jesus was not there. What did they have? The Holy Ghost. What else in the praying of the Holy Spirit? When they began praying the Holy Ghost, Peter began to do miracles. This time he has no Jesus. He's calling to say, Hey, Jesus, we fasted out. It's him acting and people are looking at him. Acts chapter 3, soon after, they healed a man that had limbs that were not working. When you read the, throughout the whole book of Acts, they said, Let us select men that are filled with the Holy Spirit so that they can begin to serve dishes in the church. But these men filled with the Holy Spirit, they were also men that prayed with the Spirit. And the Bible tells us of Stephen that miracle signs and wonders were happening through the hands of Stephen. He was not an apostle, an ordinary believer filled with the Holy Ghost. And miracles happening. Why? Because when the Holy Ghost came and Stephen was there, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak in other tongues. When we pray in tongues, we are generating the power of God for sins. Hallelujah. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Amen. My brother, my sister, desire to pray in the Holy Ghost if you don't pray in the Holy Ghost. I said some churches don't have this because they pray more in the known tongue. They pray in their own language more. Hallelujah. I had people when we started church coming from another church. When they joined us, we cooked them in a hot pot of prayer. I remember the first one prayer we had. Um, it was, uh, we were, how many were we pastors? It's ECCI. Around eight. And I'm sure when they came from, they were used to, in that city, a bit during the other prayer. We prayed the whole night. And they said, what's the secret? How is it you don't get bored in prayer? How is it it's like you are rejuvenated in prayer? I said, it's the power of the Lord. When you can pray to God. If somebody's hearing what I'm saying. When you pray in tongues, you generate the power of God. When you pray in tongues, when you are praying in tongues, the Bible says in the book of First Corinthians chapter 2, that they are deeply the things that are revealed by the Spirit of God. How and where does He reveal them? When we are praying in the Spirit. Hallelujah. For those that pray in tongues, make it a habit that when you pray in tongues, you are always listening to what God is saying. The directions of your life and where you're supposed to go, they come when you pray in tongues. Each time you're in a place where you don't know what to do, don't stress yourself. Don't be calling people. I don't know what to do now. Start to pray in tongues. That's the best call that you can do. When you are praying, make sure that you are listening to hear what God is saying. Because I guarantee you, each time when you pray in tongues, God is saying something to you. There is a point where He begins to speak. Most of the people that are crushing the praying in tongues, they use read verse five of First Corinthians chapter four. I want to explain that. 
I'm sure we've heard that scripture before. What does it say? First Corinthians 14, 5. First Corinthians 14, verse 5. Ah. I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesy. Ah. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets. Unless he indeed do what? Interprets. interprets. That the church may receive edification. That the church may receive edification. Mazaman, he's talking about the gift of prophecy, right? Rather that he prophesied. How many people understand what the gift of prophecy is? There's a prophetic office, there's a gift of prophecy. I want to explain something. How many understand what the gift of prophecy is? I tell when you were there when we told these things, you can't be down for me like that. <laughs> Speed, time is running out. The gift of prophecy. When you pray, Church. Okay, right. I want the one that says does not speak to men but to God. Read verse 3 
or two. That's true. Yes. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God. He who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to who? To God. It's like you have a direct connection. Hey, Pastor Rod, I wish you did. When you're praying in tongues, you are direct, you are speaking in the language of angels. Hallelujah. Are you getting this? Hallelujah. Amen. He that speaketh in a long time, first Corinthians 42. Speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understands him. How bad in the spirit he is speaking mysteries. So it means when you are praying in tongues, there are mysteries pretending your life, brother. Pretending your tomorrow, brother. And those mysteries for them to come. That's why the Bible says in the book of John chapter 2, 28, in the last days I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh, and the sons and daughters shall do what? Prophesy. When you are praying in tongues, you are speaking to yourself, to your life, concerning your life. You are bringing the ideas and the thoughts of God that he has for you. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 3 says, what? For I know the plans that I have for you. Plans not to harm you, but to give you an expected end. You are bringing the plans and the thoughts of God. These are the mysteries when you pray in tongues. Says that God Himself is the only one that hears. And when you do that, when you begin to pray, as He's hearing, He drops the mystery of what you're supposed to be doing. Hallelujah. Half of the things people are doing in life are things that they're not supposed to be doing. They're not they're things that are not in the plan of God. But God has to allow them. But if we we're praying in tongues, we'll be downloading the will of God concerning our lives. Hallelujah. You know what I'm saying? Are you understanding this? Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. I feel like this subject needs, needs like a whole month of teaching. Hallelujah. How paid in the spirit. So when we are praying times, we are speaking in the spirit. Hallelujah. It means our prayer life is transformed from the realm of the flesh to the realm of the spirit. And in the realm of the spirit, that's where everything is controlled. Hallelujah. All right. How to finish? Can you read for me? Verse thirteen. Just hold up a moment. Verse thirty nine. First Corinthians uh, fourteen, verse thirty nine. Uh -huh. Therefore, brethren. Desire earnestly to prophesy and do not forbid to speak with tongues. Hallelujah. Are we there in our Bibles? This is the last scripture and then we are about to pray. I want everybody to read it from your Bible. If you don't have a Bible, I'm sure they're going to be placing the scripture right there for us. We're going to read the one that they're putting on the board. Within in our Bibles. Amen. Amen. Brother Palapas, we need a, a very fast program right there. Thank you for being good for us. Alright, can we read? One, two, go. What's the point with my brother and do you see what the Bible is saying there? He's saying convert to prophesy and do not forbid or hinder speaking in tongues. This is Apostle Paul. He knew the importance of praying in tongues. He knew the value of praying in tongues. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. When we pray in tongues, we are downloading the mystery, the will of God of our lives. When we are praying in tongues, we begin to fellowship. The mind of God is downloaded over our minds. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, amen. amen. 
all of this praying for people and what not, we don't do it in our own strength. We do it because we pray in tongues. Hallelujah. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Says building up your most holy faith. To have the confidence, somebody's coming here with a big problem. You pray for them and you say, check now, you are healed. I am building my faith when I am praying in tongues. Hallelujah. Amen. That I get to a place that I know that, I know that, I know that God has done it. It doesn't matter what the situation is. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was one time we had a counter week. We were having a cell group by Flamingo, uh, Flamingo Flats. I think the following week, soon after, actually during the week of encounter, they brought a lady who was as good as dead, carried her to the house. They said, Where should we bring? I said, Bring her there, we are meeting there to pray. And then they brought her, they said, That lady didn't have cell So I went there, I prayed for that lady. I started to teach the word. Actually, during the teaching of the word, the lady got up and she sat there. I continued teaching. By the time I finished teaching, the lady was standing. All the prayer I did was just a prayer now for praying. The way had really done the way. Now I'm hearing there was a, a small child that used to come to church. She had told the whole class that the pastor is raising the dead. The lady was not dead. <laughs> but she was as good as it. And now we are getting out of the flat. Everybody there wants to know what was happening. Because they did so the lady being carried. But when the young child said the lady is dead. And when the lady began to me, says, I, I start to see people, I start to see things, I start to do this. But you know what? This, when I was talking to the husband, he says, we have moved from place to place. Trying to have a prayer deal. They've gone to some woman's event. They've done this, they've done that. It's not changing. And he says, you know what? We've paid. Where we are coming from, we're paid. So how much should I give you? I said, this is free. She said, ah, this is free. Then he asked me, he called me, but they said, how did you do it? When you pray in the Spirit, you generate the power of God. Hallelujah. Let us rise in our heart. We will have a month where we will be teaching about the Holy Ghost and we will spend more time. But the Holy Spirit is important in your prayer life. Hallelujah. He is important in your prayer life. There is a small booklet that we shall publish and we will have use for the teachings so that even in the soul groups, people will begin to speak in tongues. Wherever you are, people will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I just want us to take a moment. Our time is already up. I just want us to take a moment, just briefly, just to go before the Lord and just begin to pray. Pray that the Holy Spirit touches you. That you, you know, the desire to be filled and to be speaking in the Holy Ghost, may it just be upon you as you pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you.